weekend protests in support of science. You are looking at some of the thousands of activists who are on their way to march on Washington, uh, around cities around the world as well, in what is being dubbed the People's Climate March. This year, the march coincides with President Trump's 100th day in office, and advocates for action are gathering in hopes of trying to sway the Trump administration's vision on environmental issues. All right, so listen, this march comes at a, a crucial time for the White House. They're still split on whether the U.S. should remain in the Paris Climate Agreement. This is an Obama-era admissions control pledge. Uh, you'll remember that. Uh, plus, the fallout of the president's uh, proposed funding cuts to the EPA has forced veteran uh, environmentalists to resign from the agency. Joining us uh, is the former head of the EPA's environmental justice program, Mustafa Ali, and co-founder of the Indivisible Project, Ezra Levin. Thank you both so much for being with us. I wanted to ask you, first of all, Mustafa, uh, Sharon Boyd, uh, who's with the EPA, talked to CNN yesterday and talked about a very high level of concern for jobs there. What do you know about what's happening in that agency right now behind closed doors? Well, there are a lot of folks who are really, really concerned. Uh, folks who have an extreme amount of experience, folks who have been dedicated to communities for years, and there are offices that are disappearing, uh, information that is disappearing, and uh, it's a real great concern because folks are committed to communities across the country, and they want to make sure they're protecting their health. So I know, Ezra, that these thousands of people who were in Washington last week, who were back this week, are not coming just for the purposes of a spectacle, right? You want to affect some change. We know that there has been this, this shift in priorities, let's say, at least from the EPA. To what degree do you expect that you will be able to in, impact th this administration, to enact some change? Yeah, no, I mean, the great thing that we're seeing is that this resistance is really persisting. We've seen more people come out during the last congressional recess this April than we did in the first congressional recess in February. And the bottom line is Trump's agenda does not depend on Donald Trump. It depends on whether individual members of Congress choose to go along with it or choose to resist it. And that gives constituents a lot of power. That's why it is so exciting to see 300 or more of these marches happening across the country. Members of Congress are going to hear that, and that's going to affect their decision-making calculus. I want to point out the EPA has removed the climate change page from its website, uh, maybe reflective of obviously where their values lie. Uh, if you could sit down with the president, what would you say to him, Mustafa? I would tell him that he's placing people's lives in danger. Folks in Mossville, Louisiana, in Port Arthur, Texas, in Mobile, Alabama, uh, and across the country. You have a responsibility to protect these folks' lives. These folks are paying taxes, and their taxes should not be used to uh, deconstruct their communities. It should be about building up communities. That's where we should be focused. There is still this internal fight that I talked about at the top of whether or not the U.S. will withdraw, withdraw from the Paris Accords on climate. Does it give you any reassurance at all, considering what we heard from the president during the campaign, that this was going to be done within the 100 days, that there's no decision yet? I think it, it should give us all a lot of reassurance. Look, this first 100 days has been a battle between maliciousness and incompetence. Largely, incompetence has won. They haven't been able to get done the terrible things they've wanted to get done, and that's because people are showing up. It's a great demonstration of constituent power. As long as folks continue to show up in their home communities, we're going to see a lot more wins in the future. This is the second week, as we said of this. Do you believe, Mustafa, having been in the agency, that, uh, as Ezra believes, what we're seeing, you know, last week, this week, yes. can truly enact change. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, it's about the, the power of the people, if you will. When folks get engaged, they get educated, and they get motivated, real change happens. We've seen it uh, in the history of our country, from the women's suffrage movement to the civil rights movement, that when people say that we're going to make change, it can actually happen. Uh, as you uh, think back to what we heard from the uh, OMB director, Mick Mulvaney, who says, we're not spending money on that anymore, talking about uh, climate change uh, when he was at the White House. Uh, do you expect that, that that will change? I mean, I think what we're getting to here is that we've seen these marches, mm -hmm. uh, but what is the policy fruit in the first 100 days that you're seeing? Mm -hmm. So th this, again, comes back to who actually controls the levers of power here, mm -hmm. who writes the budget, and the answer is, Individual members of Congress have control over this. They do not represent Donald Trump back in their home districts. They represent their constituents, and they are listening to what their constituents say. Every single member of Congress cares a lot more about their own reelection than they do about any individual thing that this administration wants to get done. If people show up and say, this is not what we want to see happen, they're going to go back and they're going to 
affect change in the way their constituents want change. Yeah. We've seen that happening already. There, there was a story um, uh, about environmental health that really took all of us by storm last year was the Flint, the, mm -hmm. the crisis in Flint with the water crisis. And I understand you now, being the senior uh, VP of Hip Hop Caucus, yes. I want to make sure I get that right. That's correct. You traveled to Flint, Michigan recently. Yeah. What did they tell you there? What did you see? That they're still expecting change. They want holistic change. Mm. Uh, we, we can't place band-aids on problems anymore. They're expecting our federal government, our state governments, and local governments to really understand the needs that are existing inside of that community. Folks are excited uh, about the possibilities of change, and they're getting engaged in that process. And, and our new administration has a responsibility in that space. You may remember that uh, when it was the president-elect had went out to Michigan, he had said that he was going to fix the water quality issues that were happening inside of Flint. They have a responsibility to do that. These are taxpayers, and we understand the impacts of lead and how they follow you throughout your life cycle, and especially our most vulnerable communities. There are over 4 million children yeah. who are exposed to lead on a yearly basis. Mm. We've got to address that issue. All righty. Mustafa Ali, as 11, we appreciate both of you being here. Thank Thanks you. for taking the time. Thank Thanks you for having me.